Welcome to Paradise in the Pines, a podcast about the people, places, and stories that make this the home of American golf. Brought to you by the Pinehurst Southern Pines Aberdeen Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. And welcome to Paradise in the Pines. I'm Phil Wurz, President and CEO of the Pinehurst Southern Pines Aberdeen Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. And this time we are joined by Sally Austin, uh, Tar Heel legend, LPGA professional, uh, recent champion of an LPGA professionals event in Williamsburg, Virginia. But I think we go way back. I think I remember you coming to the Grow Park Inn. I was there early 2000s. I think you came with the North Carolina Golf Panel. And I think that's where we first originally met. I don't remember I uh, might have still been in TV then, but we go back a few years, a little bit. I, I remember meeting you at, at the Grove Park. Yeah. That's where I first remember meeting you. And I remember meeting you and you invited me to play Finley Golf Course, mm-hmm. which since has had some renovations and changes over the years. Uh, great golf course uh, and home to the UNC Tar Heels. But uh, thanks for joining us in Paradise in the Pines. I know you've been busy. Well, thanks, Phil. It's great to be here. And you were just recently got back from Williamsburg and Kings Mill. Uh, you had a great uh, opportunity to play in the LPGA Professionals Championship uh, Super Senior Division. Yeah. Uh, you led wire to wire, uh, which is pretty amazing. Talk about uh, playing in that tournament. You've done it numerous times, but uh, is this the first time you've won it? Uh, yeah, I finished second in the Senior Division, I think, twice, maybe three times. But um, yeah, it was fun. I tried to, I've just not been playing well, and a lot of it's between my ears, and I just tried to go and say, look, just have fun with the people you're playing. Don't put any pressure on yourself. If you hit it well, you hit it well. If you don't, you don't, and do the best you can. And amazingly, um, I hit it really pretty well the first two days, and the last day, I, as I told you earlier, I played with one hand around my throat and tried to <laughs> scrape it in. Right, yeah. yeah. It, and it's different. I mean, it's hard to tell the amateur golfer the difference between casual golf with your friends and playing in a tournament and tournament play. What what is that? Is that mental? Is it mostly mental? Obviously, you got to have the game and you got to score. You got to put the ball in the hole. But what is the difference between just like hanging out and playing a pine needles and playing in a LPGA Professionals Championship? Well, I think what goes on between your ears, and as I tell people, you don't realize how much competing helps with that if you're not competing and you're comp- you even on little things you get uh, little tournaments or whatever and you compete once or twice a year it's a whole different ball game at least for me mentally I mean I I had I worked with Dr. Coop when I was playing and with my team on what we thought and how we thought and I had to mm. practice that um you know I tell people if you got close to me on the green sometimes you'd wonder if I was crazy or who I was talking <laughs> to because um, I was working on what I was thinking and trying to make my thoughts help my game instead of hinder my game. Mm. So you held off Jan- Jeanette uh, Colehouse. I um, did. She's from, a good uh, player. Yes. And yeah, you, so obviously you know her. Uh, what was it like? I mean, you were in this final group together, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you're, you're going head to head. I think you would bogeyed a couple, go through the final round and, and how you kind of got challenged there. And in the back nine, it got a little testy, but you held her off. Um, yeah, she played, she hit the ball pretty well. She, she coming in, she helped me, really. She, she really did because I was stumbling and she three-putted uh, from birdie range. Hmm. To, to, I can do to, that. To, well, yeah, <laughs> we all can. And she was going for it, knocked it five feet by, four or five feet by, and, and missed him coming back on hmm. the last, I think, four or five holes. So that really helped me. But I, 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 again, mentally, I tried very hard not to pay attention to anybody but me and yeah. trying to do my thing. You know, I know people are playing well or not playing well, but I don't know what they're scoring. I, I didn't think I'd won when I got in. Hmm. I, I really didn't. I, I, I thought my score was higher than it was, <laughs> and I thought their score was lower, and I just – I was kind of I was pleasantly surprised to take the trip. We we can go through your list of accomplishments, your resume, all kinds of um you've been trailblazer throughout your entire career, but you know, what did it mean to you to, to win a championship? I mean it's it's pretty cool. For any for anybody anywhere it's pretty cool. Winning you can't I mean it's hard to you can't take the place of winning in my in my mind. I mean that shouldn't be all you live for, but it's certainly in the circumstance that's what I'm trying to do. And mm-hmm. even though I went into that telling myself, just go have a good time, it, it meant a lot for me to um, to shuffle to victory in the <laughs> old ladies' uh, division there. But because there were good players there, players I had played with when I was had played on the LPGA and on the mini tours, mm-hmm. and Therese Hessian was there, and she was a 
really good player on the LPGA and a great coach. She just retired, but she hadn't competed in probably 30 years, so it was wow. it was different for her too. But uh, Cindy Miller, who, who's won uh, the senior event and played on the LPGA, and, um, you know, the the – Played with another gal I didn't really know. Uh, uh, Paul, I can't right now. Last name escapes me. She she really played well too. Coming in, she she made some birdies coming in. She chipped in on the last hole and went mm. uh oh. But um, it, it was it was a, it was a good time. I did enjoy it. Which lately, as badly as I've been playing, I haven't always couldn't always say that. But I enjoyed being with the people that I used to play with too. Well, congratulations on Thanks. the championship. And not only did you win the championship, but you're also presented with the Shirley Spork Award. Mm-hmm. And for people that don't know, the lower score, age 70 and older, Spork uh, was the LPGA co-founder and co-founder of the LPGA Professionals. So um, reading some quotes from you, I mean, she means a lot to you. How much did she mean to you? Well, I didn't know her that well, but I knew um, I knew her by meeting her. She always came to the team event when it was held out in Palm Springs and um, was very enthusiastic and encouraging and promoted the LPGA uh, professional div- uh, division. And she, she, was just, she was just really encouraging and a mentor to a lot of the players. I can't say she was my mentor, but uh, that would be Ms. Bell and Wiffy Smith. Um, but, but I knew her and knew how much she meant to a lot of the people, particularly on the West Coast, that were able to, to be around her a lot. Yeah. But she was very supportive of our um, our professionals. Let's go to the uh, Wayback Machine. Uh, you grew up in Rayford, North Carolina, which, <laughs> yeah. you know. Flight of it, Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> it's still, you know, out in the country, but it was yeah. it really out in the country back, back yeah. in the day. And uh, so how did you find golf growing up in Rayford, and uh, what got you started in the game? Well, my father got me started. I, for, growing up in Rayford was, I look back on my childhood, and it was terrific because we had a neighborhood full of kids who loved to, we just played outside. We played baseball in the summer, mm-hmm. football in the fall, basketball in the winter. We all got together and played. And I, um, I loved just being outside and playing sports, and Dad did, loved golf and other sports too, but yeah. he loved golf. And he told me one time, he said, Sally, I don't think you're going to be able to play basketball and football all your life so let's why don't we try golf and mm. so he took me out and I liked it my brother went out then too um he he didn't take to it immediately because I don't think it moved fast enough for him but you know it was it was such a good time to be with my dad and uh, play golf and in the summer he had his own business and it we <laughs> we joined Pinehurst for $75 <laughs> from May, we got a membership from May so I think till October, uh-huh. played all the golf we wanted, and we would go and park at the at the track hmm. on Wednesday afternoons with my yeah. dad. We'd play around and come back. We did that a lot during the summer, and then Parker Hall had a junior golf camp. We paid a dollar for the wow. summer every Monday. We would come to Pinehurst, and he'd have instructions instructors for us and competition, and we we all. All morning, we were had that instruction, and then we had a little tournament at the end of the summer. Yeah. So I was around Pinehurst a lot, and then when I was probably 12 or 13, I started going to take lessons from uh, Mrs. Bell. Yeah. And then, the you know, the Bells just took me in. And yeah. So the small town of Rayford, I played my golf at Arabia. That's where we played our high school golf, but being close to Pinehurst was a blessing and have a, having parents who really supported me and my dad who loved golf enough it was i don't think it was an undue burden for him to bring us up here yeah for 75 like bucks 75 dollars I mean, for the beat whole it. summer have to talk to mr pashley about that <laughs> i'd like to talk to him about that but yeah i mean they didn't have air conditioning in the, in the clubhouse so nobody wanted to come here i guess I and know. the hotel was closed during the summer yeah back I get, then. yeah yeah I never heck i didn't go to that hotel that was yeah. that was too highfalutin for me i was from rayford from right heck. yeah you mentioned uh, Miss Bell, Peggy Kirk Bell, yeah. obviously um, legend. Um, when did you know who she was when you were a kid, or did that did your dad know? I'm sure yeah. he, he probably did. He did. What was it like to to meet her the first time? Well, and everybody, I tell the story because it, it is kind of funny. So when I scheduled a lesson with her the first time, my mom said, "Now you tell her that that you were in the hospital. She came to tell us goodbye." When Bonnie was born, because Bonnie was born one week to the day ahead of me, but mm. cesarean, and they stayed in the hospital a lot longer. 
And she came around and told everybody goodbye. So you need to tell her that story. And I said, oh, you know, I was kind of shy, and I didn't know Ms. Bell, and I just knew she was really good, and who am I? And so I told her, because I did try to do mostly what my mother said. <laughs> and she immediately, I think, um, thought, hmm, maybe I can get Bonnie a little more interested <laughs> in, in golf, because Bonnie was one of the best athletes I knew. She could do anything. Yeah. And anyway, that's how it started, and the Bell family took me in, never charged me. I, yeah, Pat said I, the bills, I still uh, yeah, I owe them a I have a huge tab <laughs> right. there, and I do, but that's how it got started. And um, her, with her encouragement, knowing Bonnie and going to junior tournaments and meeting other junior players, that was instrumental in uh, piquing my interest and making me really want to play. And so at, at that point, became a good player, uh, got better. Mm -hmm. And then um, what got you involved to, to, to go to North Carolina? I mean, there wasn't a women's team mm -hmm. at the time. Talk about how that all transpired in the early mid-70s okay. uh, when, when golf finally got started at Carolina. Well, um, again, my father was a, a, a Rams Club member at Carolina, and he'd gone on a, a trip. They, my parents had gone on a trip with uh, then-athletic director Homer Rice, and mm. he had approached – Mr. Ice and said, my daughter's coming. Do you think we could do a golf team? And he said, have her come see me. So I marched my little shy self in there again, not really wanting to. but And he was wonderful. He said, sure, we'll have it. And um, unbeknownst to me, Mindy Moore, at the same time, her dad had gone to Carolina and knew the husband of the, the women's AD at, at the time, for lack of a better term. And she had gotten together with them and that's where we first met at our, yeah. at our organizational meeting. So we started the team in 1973 trying to find anybody who could, who could strike a lick at a snake, really. Is <laughs> so I was on the first tournament. Mindy reminds me of this. I was the only one who broke 100. Oh I my shot gosh. 90, I think. But we got better, and we, had, we were a top, I guess, 20 team by the time we were seniors. So back then, like 74, when that team started, who, who were like the best? Best I, I mean, teams? I mean, how many were there? I mean, well, UNCG had a team, okay. and in fact, they won a national championship. Uh, Donna White, Donna Horton at the time, who was from Kinston, played at UNCG, and um, there were some others that, 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 you know, they had a pretty good team. But the best uh, teams, Furman, uh, Beth Daniel. Yeah. Um, gosh, Cindy Farrow, all those, they were a great team. Tulsa, Florida, University of Florida. Yeah. Uh, Georgia had a good team. Um, Miami. So those were the top, top team. Arizona, Arizona State, I think. So those were top teams. So you guys weren't driving around like they do today in like Mercedes Benz <laughs> vans and staying at the Four Seasons. <laughs> what was it like, kind of roughing it back then to to matches and things like that? Well, we traveled in a school fifteen passenger van, and most of them leaked. <laughs> they did. I'm not even sure they had air conditioning. I don't think so. But um, that, it, we can tell some funny stories. But you know, I tell these kids we stayed in. We didn't have any. I mean, we had eight dollars a day for a meal, for meals. That wasn't one meal. That was for all the meals. Yeah. And we stayed in hotel rooms, and five of us would stay in a room, and we just put a cot in the middle and sleep five across, because <laughs> nobody wanted to, to room with Coach Gunnels because she <laughs> snored. And then before that, we we didn't um, want to room with the coaches either. So we had we had three. I had three different coaches, and Coach Gunnels came my junior year. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So you eventually became the head coach of yes. the UNC Tar Heels. Uh -huh. I mean, was that a day that you were just like pinching yourself? Because I mean, you're, I mean, I know you being through and mm -hmm. through Tar Heel, born and bred, and um, about as Carolina <laughs> blue as it gets. Yeah. Um, what was it like to to be named the head coach at North Carolina? It, it, it was a thrill for me. I'd helped on and on and off as much as I could. Coach Gunnels, I would go help her with the tournament, and so it was kind of her part time assistant. And then I became more of a full-time or paid assistant, I should say, my two years before I got the head job. But to get the head job was, you know, it was, I don't know if I'd ever even dreamed about doing that, but it it, it was thrilling for me to be there and be among those um, terrific, unbelievable coaches. You, you look at the game now and you look at the, the ladies game especially um, has come a long way. Uh, when you were recruiting back in the 90s compared to what it is today, how, how much has the, has the game changed, has recruiting changed, and, and ladies golf changed? Well, the biggest thing in my mind, uh, the length these kids hit the ball, it, it's just it's incredible how far they hit it. When I first started coach, uh, as a head coach, the long hitters hit it 240, mm -hmm. maybe 250. Um, but 
you know, you figure if you could get a player that could average over 200 yards off the tee, that'd be okay. But by the time I had been coaching four or five years, that just – that didn't cut it anymore. Cause, yeah. And so I would say length, and now they're scoring – the scoring um, – but part of it's because of the length, part of it's because they're being coached and trained at such a young age, fitness, all that is yeah. playing in. Um, but the length, these – I just it's it's just astounding to me how far they can hit it. And now you've got things like you know first T U.S. Kids. I mean, as we record this, we're in the middle of the two weeks of the mm-hmm. U.S. Kids World Teen Championships uh, here in Pinehurst, playing eleven different courses. Uh, you know, Allison Corpus, who uh, won the the ladies mm-hmm. U.S. Open at Pebble Beach, um, she played here. You know, Scotty Scheffler, Jordan Spieth, Colin Morikawa. There's like three dozen players, men and women, that have come through here. Mm-hmm. Um, how much has it changed even for, for kids? Like when you grew up, you know, your dad got you involved, mm-hmm. but now, like you said, it's, it's the parents, the coaches, the psychologists. It's, I mean, it's amazing if you're a kid right now and you're trying not to be that parent, you know, that kind of pushes them into that. Mm-hmm. So what, what would you recommend for kids that are getting involved that maybe are playing U S kids and, you know, aspire to be a touring professional, which is, you know, a lot of people do not make it then do make it. Right. Well, even when I was coaching, a parent that would ask me, if they asked me advice, my advice would be, don't, you know, let, let the kid initiate wanting to go to the golf course early on. and Don't push them. It, let it be their desire to play and then just be there to support them and, and provide, for, provide instruction or whatever they need, but let it be their decision. I, even early on when I was recruiting, I realized some of those kids were playing, and they weren't playing for themselves. They were playing because their parents were just riding herd on them all the time. Yeah. But um, support them certainly, but let it be their decision. And I, I, I still believe they ought to play other sports. I, I can't believe these kids start at ten, t- eight and ten, and that's all they do. It's one sport. I, even my, I have uh, several good friends that played soccer at Carolina and and for the country, and their kids, they don't. They encourage them to play other sports. They don't like the one sport deal. So it's it's just you want to find competitors and kids that want to be. You want them there because they want to be there, not because they yeah. are obliged to be there. You still coach. Uh, you're mm-hmm. over at Pine Needles. Yep. Uh, I'm sure you coach with Donna, uh, mm-hmm. Donna Andrews. Yep. Um, what's it like? I mean, you, you, you learn under Miss Bell, and then to be at the site where she became a legend and, you know, that – golf courses hosted for U.S. Women's Opens now. What's it like to not only play there as a kid, but then to come back, teach there, and teach the next generation or even current generations uh, about the game of golf? Um, again, I have to pinch my – I do have to pinch myself sometimes because I don't think – sometimes I realize the great opportunity that that I have here – have had here and still have and that I – where I am and – uh, you know, I've, I've grown up with this, so sometimes when you're in it all the time, you don't step out and realize, wow, I mean, this is it's something special. Pine Needles and all that Ms. Bell and the Bell family's created there is something special. Yeah. Um, and for me to be part of it is just, I'm from Rayford, for goodness sake. <laughs> um, it's just kind of, you know, it, it, it's, it's unbelievable when I really step back and think about it. Um, I'm, I've been very blessed with the people in my life and the Bell family has been just mm-hmm. instrumental. You got to play in a championship there, the 2019 U S uh, women's amateur with Helen Alfredson had mm-hmm. won that championship. Mm-hmm. What was it like to kind of tee it up in a national USGA championship at your home course? Well, I was thrilled to be there. I was thrilled to have qualified. I was thrilled uh, to have made the cut. Um, I was, the pressure just about ate me alive, <laughs> uh, which was my fault. I just, it was to handle that. I didn't do a very good job it, to the point that it was not even fun. Yeah. Um, I came in and was, this is another story I tell cause you know, I think I've got a pretty good sense of humor and I think it's pretty <laughs> funny, but I asked the guy interviewing me from WRL with somebody because I was local, not cause I was, yeah. um, he said, you know, what was it like? I said, well, do you, I said, you're probably not old enough to remember Steve Sachs. And he looked at me and he said, oh. I said, yeah, the baseball, the Dodger baseball yeah, player, second throw. baseman, he couldn't throw it from second to first. Yeah. That's what I felt like. I couldn't <laughs> throw it. All I was doing was throwing it in the ground, throwing it over the head. Um, and that's what it was like. It's that kind of pressure that you put on yourself. It's yeah. nobody's fault but your own. But to have had it there, to have, to have participated in that, 
um, was pretty was very special to me. I don't remember who you paired with in the first couple of days. You know, I don't even remember. <laughs> I do not remember. When and when you see players, I mean, obviously, I'm sure you had a chance to see players like Nellie Corda and Minji Lee, who won yeah. uh, the U.S. Women's Open mm -hmm. later on in, in 2022 last year. Uh, when you saw that event, you see those players, those professionals of today. That you know, Nellie Corda's hitting it. <laughs> just bombing it and uh, yeah so i mean when you see those ladies um you know how much of an awe are you and how much of are you proud of the women's game that has come so far over the years uh, i am proud of how far it's come and, and they are great players and i i wish more people watch them they hit it i cannot believe how far they hit it I, i'm I, I, I walked around some and then i would go in to peggy ann's or whatever and watch tv or watch it on tv and I, one of those gals on the fourth hole that I, I couldn't have played in that tournament because I couldn't have, where they had the tee, I couldn't have carried the water. Yeah. She's hitting it 300. They said she hit it 317 yards. What? <laughs> and Nellie Corder bombs it first tournament back on the first hole. Yeah. I think she hit a 370 yard drop. It's, I'm going, I'm just, I don't, I, I can't relate to that. I just, it's hard to, it's hard to relate. But watching them putt, I can. I, I can hold my own with them around the greens. But, yeah. and, and that's why I talked to my PJ Tour friends and they're like, it all comes down to putting. I mean, it really, when you really get down to it, it comes down to that, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Because I think ball strikers now are kind of a dime a dozen mm -hmm. at that level anymore. And you you still got to get in the hole unless you hold it from the fairway a lot. And not many people do that. And putting is, um, it's, it's, it, it separates. Being able, and also being able to... Um, Minimize your misses and make the most of your misses. I think that's those are the things that separate. The uh, and again, you're a pine needles. You teach there still, so people may not know about the Gafari. Gafari has yeah, been there yeah. for decades, and talk about that and how much uh, you have fun teaching during that event. Well, I I, I do it really. I've, I really enjoy those. Women have a, have a great time. It's, and it does my heart good to see so many women getting together and really liking golf mm -hmm. and then finding friends and. Um, Coming back every year, they'll come back the same week and meet up with these friends. The golfaris are, you know, you know, it's five days of instruction and play and then social time. And mm -hmm. I just, the women are so appreciative. Uh, it's just very rewarding because I'm not, what I do, I don't solve world peace. But to see them <laughs> happy and thrilled that they've made some progress, that makes me feel good. Yeah. So uh, if you and Donna were to tee it up, who's, who's, who's going to win that match? Oh, God, Donna, every time. Are you kidding me? <laughs> She's good. She's good. Yeah. <laughs> She's still good. She can, she, um, it amazes me. She, she hardly ever plays and hardly ever hits balls and her tempo never changes. Right. And it's just, it's, it's fun and it's fun teaching with her. We're pretty simpatico. I think we're kind of on the same wavelength, uh, as far as instruction goes. And she's been kind enough to include me in her boot camps to teach. And I've really enjoyed being around her and learned a lot from her. And I hope she's learned some, some things from me too, but She's a really good player still. I tell you what, she's really good on camera too because when we first started doing video here at the CVB, yeah. she did some golf tips for us. She is a one-take wonder. Mm -hmm. You tell her, get 60 seconds on chipping, 60 seconds on this. It's like, boom, done, one take. She does everything that way. It's amazing. <laughs> so you and I both serve on the North Carolina golf mm -hmm. panel. And gosh, I, I'm kind of off and on when I moved out of the state and came back in. But how cool is this that we get to play all over the state of North Carolina, some of the best golf courses, and then rate the top 100 yeah. in the state? Piner's number two has always been number one. I think grandfather's inching a little bit yeah. closer. But uh, but how fun is it to, to be able to go around the state and, and rate these amazing golf courses? North Carolina is very blessed. We are we are really blessed, and so am I. And again, that was because of my affiliation at Pine Needles and, and Mr. Henley, and you know, he, he, get he got me on it the very first one, and I've I've thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed uh, being being on there and all the people that I meet like yeah. you and getting to play all these courses. I just wish they didn't have so many of them in May because my May is taken <laughs> up with golf schools, or in August or July <laughs> yeah. when you're playing in the LPGA yeah, Professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because uh, we had our summer I mean, meeting. Yeah, I miss, I miss that too. Yeah. We have a summer meeting. It's three days. This year was at Grandover, so we got to play both Grandover courses and then Forest Oaks, which used to host the mm -hmm. the GGO, which is now the Wyndham, which is now at Sedgefield, which we get to play Sedgefield as well, and Quail Hollow and Elk River. And I mean, it's pretty cool to be able to play around the state. And and, and uh, but what would be like if you were to pick top five 
outside of Finley, which is UNC's home course, um, what would be like maybe your top five in the state? Obviously, we can pick Piners number two, but kind of fun place there. If you had a chance to go anywhere in the state, where would you go? I love Grandfather. That's my happy, being up in the mountains of North Carolina is kind of a happy place. Peace washes over me. I just love the mountains of North Carolina and playing it, there's. If we, did it, you play that it, last no. year? I can't remember if you, you were there, but the superintendent had the greens running like 18 that day. They're quick. I put it off the green like three times. They're quick. And I think I'm a decent putter. It was, but it is a beautiful golf course. It is. If you're putting downhill, you, you don't want yeah. to putt downhill. No. You know, in fact, it's hard to putt downhill because I don't know how you can get above the hole to putt downhill. <laughs> right. Maybe a couple other courses in the state um, you like. Let's see. Some of them I like. Um, outside of here, I, I guess I need to not put these into. Oh. You know, I, p- I played a course. Did you play Deep Springs? Yeah, I up in Stoneville. Loved, I mean, that's like a hidden gem. It and is. It's it's, uh, it's a great little. It's a great golf course. Good layout. Really good condition. Um, and Ellis Maples Golf Course. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just in Stoneville, just north of Greensboro, yeah. almost to to Virginia. Right. And you know, um, of course, you know Quail Hollow and Sedgefield. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, there are so many good golf courses. It's hard for me to narrow them down. Um, but uh, the mountain courses are there are a lot in the mountains I like, but also yeah. you know I love I do love Quail Hollow, um, Charlotte Country Club, Raleigh Country Club. I don't get to play those. I don't play those very. Play often, Raleigh Country Club this year with the panel. We yeah. get to play Old Chatham, yeah. which is another amazing yeah, golf course. It's good, yeah. Um, good gosh, where else is it? it and the, I, I don't have to leave the area really. Yeah. To so enjoy if, golf. It, if it if, wasn't yeah. if it wasn't yeah. one of Kelly's courses, Pine Needles, yeah. Mid Pines, or Southern Pines Golf Club, or Eagle. Eagle Point. Eagle Point. Yeah, Eagle Point's beautiful. Yeah, almost and, knocked uh, the water over. <laughs> yeah, Eagle Point is great. Is a uh, is just terrific. down near Wilmington. Yeah. Um, also, um, let's see what the, you play Tobacco Road. Yeah. <laughs> it's a love hate. It's well, it's it's fun to play. Yeah, it I is. wouldn't want a steady diet. And those they are so wonderful. Have always been so great to me there, and it's a terrific shape. But it's you know now that we've gotten Bermuda greens here, Phil, it's kind of hard for me to hold some. Some greens. I yeah. Mean, give me an elevated green, I and I've got anything above a wedge, even a wedge, I sometimes have a hard time holding it. There are a couple of greens at Tobacco Road that I really don't know how to, you know, yeah. can hold them. So it's it's Mike Strands on steroids. Oh, man, don't or you on know? acid. I don't know <laughs> what yes, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But it's it's a it's a lot of it is fun to play. But there there I'm just sitting here trying to think. I wish I had thought ahead of time to figure out which ones I like Linville. Um yeah. Blowing Rock Diamond was nice. Diamond Creek. Oh, my god. Diamond gosh. Creek, yeah. So those are all those mountain courses. Um, and I hadn't played the – well, that's in out to South Carolina. I'm sure, I, the North Carolina, um, I guess my Eagle Point is probably my favorite course at the beach. Yeah, you know, and that hosted um, the PGA Tour event when it wasn't at Quail Hollow yeah, uh, yeah. because of the President's Cup, I believe. Yes, exactly. Um, let's bring it a little bit closer to home or to home. Uh, speaking of home, the USGA is going to be calling this mm-hmm. uh, their second headquarters in home. Right. Uh, the, the building's already under construction. The – the employees that'll be there will be there. I understand in December 2023 mm-hmm. this year. Um, what do you think about all this with Pinehurst? I mean, you grew up in Rayford and saw this area, and you played at Pinehurst for seventy five dollars, and now you got the USGA coming here, World Golf Hall of Fame, U.S. Opens next year through 2047. Mm-hmm. Uh, just amazing growth, but t- to see that in this area truly become and worthy of the name Home of American Golf. How does that make you feel? Well, it's back where it should be. Um, I thought it was blasphemous when they moved the World Golf Hall of Fame to St. Augustine years ago. I thought, what? <laughs> but, you know? And so um, I'm thrilled it's coming back here, as I understand. That's yeah. There's got the Hall of Fame. Um, I think it's great. I don't like all the – you know, I'd like to – you won't like to hear this, but I would like to have closed the doors to this town about 1990. Right. <laughs> but, um, it, you know, growth, you're going you're to yeah. have it. And, and right. it's kind of – I think having uh, a USGA big presence here is is appropriate. And you know, and we have this discussion. I do a lot, and we've had this discussion off off camera uh, about the growth of the area. And mm-hmm. I think you know, I, and I've told Reagan Parsons and Jeff Sanborn and Paul Saviston, the town managers in Southern Pines, Pinehurst, and Aberdeen. I don't envy their jobs because they have to put together the pieces of the puzzle to make sure it all fits as we get into the 2030s and 2040 mm-hmm. area and, and maintaining the quaintness and charm of the village of Pinehurst and the great walking downtown that Southern Pines and there is like Cameron and Vass that are growing in Robbins and, and everything that's going to happen. I mean, this area is going to change quite a bit, but hopefully we maintain some of that so it keeps keeps some people that don't want to close the doors, keep it a little bit open. Uh, but, you know, 
uh, we're very fortunate. I mean, we don't have mountains. We don't have the beach. I tell visit North Carolina, you know, well, I see their hype reel for the state tourism. It's, it's the mountains and the coast. And they throw in a little golf shot at the end mm -hmm. there. And it's like we get mentioned. But I think they understand now with the U.S. Open and, and, uh, and the USJ moving here, it, it's pretty significant. It has a huge impact economic development wise. Uh, but again, we like our little, little mm -hmm. slice of, uh, of Moore County in Piners too. Um, but I'll ask you one last question as we wrap up. Um, we talked about golf and what you like. I always like to ask this because people like to come to the area mm -hmm. and we're the experts on, on tourism. And you're the expert as a resident as to like what the hidden gems are. So when you like have friends come to town and you like to go take them somewhere special, what are the maybe three top restaurants that you'd like to take oh, your friends man, and you're visitors put to? Me on the spot. Yeah. Um, you know, I, it's hard to beat Chapman's for mm -hmm. value for the, you know, really good food, not real expensive. Um, I go to, El, you know, Elliot's. Um, my favorite right now is probably, uh, outside of Vito's, I mean, I've been here. All yeah. Time, is Lisi. I just yeah, love it's great. that restaurant. Uh, yeah. Um, so those are, those are places in the pubs down in Pinehurst. They're, they're a lot of fun too. I, I'll, I'll tell, depending, if, you know, I've got a group, if there are a group of guys I know coming here, I'll tell them to go to the down there to the pubs and um i always recommend uh, uh lisi um probably lisi elliott's um and v you know vito's if you want pizza and chapman's if you just want to go have a decent meal and not pay a dime uh, an arm and a leg right that, that's what i have noticed since coming back how expensive <laughs> these restaurants are but yeah there, there's some, a lot of good food here well, Sally, it's been awesome uh, catching up with you a little bit. I see you at the golf panel events. If we're, we're not playing together, and it was probably a couple of years since we've done that. Mm -hmm. I don't get a chance to really get a chance to catch up with you. So it's always great to see you. Uh, you know I'm a Duke fan, but I know you're a Tar Heel fan. <laughs> so she's getting yeah, ready to slap me right that. now. You forgot you about that. I but trying to change it. But yeah, but What's we can tell it. We can we can all get along, right? <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. uh, Sally Austin, LPGA professional. Congratulations on your championship, Rayford native, uh, Tar Heel through and through, uh, and we appreciate that. Well, thanks, Phil. Thank I hate your Duke fan, but I'm, I'm going to try to convert you. But you know, that's thanks okay. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely, Sally. Well, uh, thank you for joining us in Paradise in the Pines. If you want to learn more about tourism in the Pine or Southern Pines, Aberdeen area, go to homeofgolf.com. To watch some of our videos, go to our YouTube channel, which is Home of American Golf. And if you love this podcast, Paradise in the Pines, just search that and you can listen and watch. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.